to be an award-winning filmmaker? Uh, first of all, I would like to say thank you to Weaver, Weaver uh, uh, Awards uh, Academy for awarding the Genoa documentary as the best overall film and also uh, best director during the Weaver Awards in 2024. Right. It's an amazing journey to be recognized and for someone to see that these people have been doing something and they deserve an award. Right. So it was an honor to me and my director Sandra Wongo to receive those awards. So you feel like all the all the hard work, all the early mornings and late nights. Yes, the whole documentary took us around six months of documenting. So it wasn't an easy journey, and it's not a journey that has ended. We're still going on. Right. Yes. You know, at least for and I understand production. <laughs> yes. You know, you tell me six months. I'm like, that's intense. Filmmaking is not easy. M many a times people look at a, at a film, especially documentary, it's not easy gathering all this information. You look at something that is three minutes, it might have taken years to put together the whole footage and the whole information. Right. So. And let's briefly talk about the making of Genoa, which is uh, focusing on uh, the rise of Gladys Wanga, who is a governor yes. in Homer Bay County. So how we came about going to do this story, uh, Sandra Wongo, my director, had always been wanting to do this documentary. She's a photo, she'd been a photojournalist for a long time. Right. And she'd been wanting to document Gladys Wanga since people know Gladys Wanga and they're like, oh, Gladys Wanga is too loud, you know, as a politician. Gladys Wanga is fire. Yeah. <laughs> but we always wanted to understand who is Gladys Wanga right. be behind the, the political loud Gladys Wanga. And, uh, there was this call out for seven female filmmakers to follow seven uh, leaders in Kenya by Media Focus in Africa in partnership with Flav and Diesel, DocuBox, and other partners. Right. So we applied and we were honored to be part of the people who were selected to do this story. Right. It has been an amazing journey following the story of Gladys Wanga during election and after election, and we are happy she won to be the first governor in Homa Bay and the first female governor in the region, which is a uh, very, very male uh, patriarchal space. Right. Yes. Right. And so now let's flash back yes. a little bit to where the dream all began. Whose dream? <laughs> <laughs> the dream for doing, you know, uh, there's, no. there's a lot of. This yes. is uh, the film industry. Yes. Which is wide. And now your journey to this, did you have a passion for it? When did you realize that, no, this is something I want to do it, I want to do it professionally, and I'm going for those awards? Man, I joined the Kenya Institute of Mass Communication in the year 2008, and I had wanted to do editing. And then I got to Kenya Institute of Mass Communication, and at some point, I was hanging around uh, guys who were doing camera. Right. And they kind of convinced me to join the camera class, and it was an amazing uh, decision because there were less women taking up technical spaces in the industry, whether it's media or film. So I joined the camera class and graduated in 2011, and I've never turned my back on filmmaking. I've been doing this. I've been working in the media, right. both local and international. I've been able to work on uh, productions in Kenya and outside Kenya. And it's been an amazing journey working, especially as a technical person, as a camera lady. Right. Considering that we could be also less than 10 camera people at that time working in Kenya. Right. Yes. But since then, it has grown. We actually, we even have female camera people here mm -hmm. uh, in studio. So the strides have been made. And uh, talk to us about what makes a good film. You know, you're an award <laughs> <laughs> filmmaker. So you're in a very good position. Just tell us, what makes a good film? There's so many things that contribute into a good film. Right. First, you have to have a good story. You know, you have to have a good story. And then now you have to go into the technical part where it, it comes with good pictures, good sound, good post-production, which brings in graphics and everything. So it's a whole pot, you know. But first of all, you have a good story, right. you know. That's where it all begins. Yes having that good story. And so from your background, you were the technical person behind the camera. So did you find your transition a little easier because you already know what you want, you already know the kind of shot you want, you already know the opening shot that you want? It, it is an interesting transition in that uh, you've been working in behind the scenes a lot and shooting for other people their story, but now you're coming and you want to do your story. Right. It might sometimes be challenging because you also want to be too controlling, <laughs> too controlling when you're working with other 
camera people and sound guys, but it's, it, it helps you because you already understand what kind of picture you want, what kind of quality of picture you want to put out there. Right. Yes. And being uh, a woman at, that, at the time when there are not as many ladies as they are right now, how did you feel at the time? Did you like feel tough to be among the boys? You, you, you had to toughen up, <laughs> you know, you have to toughen up and you have to work a hundred and one times more than the men to prove that you're good at this, to prove that you're capable of doing this. Because it's a technical job and many a times people, you know, look over what you do or your successes right. and they want to attribute it to other men. So when, when, when people are, are running 100 meters, you have to run 150 to prove that you can do this. And many a times a mistake done by a woman can be easily overjudged. Oh. So you really, really have to be pro, 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 pro. But I'm happy I had people who held my hand. I had um, other men who held my hand. I had um, other females in right. this space that also were you know, advising you and telling you this is how to go about it. Try this, try that. So it's been amazing to also have mentors in the industry, yes. Right. And when you talk about mentors in the industry, there are names like uh, Wanuri Kahu that come across, uh, Nini Wasera. So in that space, women are coming up. So is there one specific, say, producer, director that you look up to, you have worked with, and you are amazed by their work? There's so many people, but first of all, let me talk about the, the documentary that we just uh, talked about, Genoa. Right. When Genoa uh, pre-production phase started, oh, we it's got... Genoa. Yes. I just said Genoa. Genoa. <laughs> Genoa. Yes, the rise of Gladys okay. Wanga. When the Media Focus in Africa did a call out in partnership with DocuBox and other partners, we got a chance to be mentored by two amazing female filmmakers, documentary right. filmmakers, one of them being Zipi Kimundo, which mm -hmm. is amazing, and Lydia Matata, right. among other. And then in post-production, we were mentored by uh, Frankie of African Post Office. So we have these women who really, really, really guide you and tell you this is how to produce, this is how to do proposals, this is how to script, because um, some of us were moving from fiction to documentary, some were moving from media, house, media uh, side to films. Right. So it was amazing to be thought how documentary filmmaking is done. But in my journey also I've had other amazing um, mentors like uh, Georgina of Gigi Images. Uh, I look up to people like Judy Kibinge of DocuBox. You know, there's so many names that I could name of people I look up to and I would want to be able to tell my stories right. like them. So the, you know, the, the is the, the old narrative, some people call it sick old narrative that Women don't really support other women, but in the film industry, how has that journey been for you? I believe we humans generally could easily support each other, and there are those few cases whereby you have an issue with someone, but I've, I've, I've had amazing journey that people are able to support each other. And we need to kill the narrative that women fight each other because right. we make it a norm and, and the rest of the people out there will think these women can never work together. This Philamudada was a cohort for women. Women right. directors, women producers, producers. women post-production, following women leaders. So you see, actually women can support each other. Right. Yes. And uh, do you ever make a film so good that you want to be on the other side? We've gotten to some points whereby you do a story and you end up becoming part of the story. Right. Yes. And uh, as a filmmaker, sometimes you have to learn when to take the back seat so that you can allow your character also to, you know, to shine. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so, and one, I know Genoa is celebrated because it's an award-winning film. Uh, but besides Genoa, which other films have you worked on as well? Uh, I've done a couple of local Kenyan films. I've uh, been able to work on, uh, I worked on Majuta as a co-producer, which was a web series. It was uh, talking about counter-terrorism in East Africa. Right. I've worked on um, other uh, short, short films with uh, other Kenyan local filmmakers, worked on stay series. But many a times I worked as a technical person, as a camera person. Right. But for the past six years, I've been purely on documentaries especially uh, impact stories on uh, human interest. Nice. Yes. Okay, and the essence of making films, you know, we want to start conversations, making people aware of what's happening around them, and as well generate an income. So the question of money always comes in. Yes. So 
the film industry. Is there money in the film industry? The film industry has a potential of making money. Right. It is the it, it has potential of being a biggest contributor to the economy of this country. But we have to set up some things, some things in the system because the whole art industry for the longest time hasn't been appreciated as a profession, as mm -hmm. a career. And we don't have proper guidelines on, on where we lie on matters, you know, economy and finances. And that's why it's difficult. You make a film and it's difficult to recover your money. Right. Because most people would be like, ah, it's just pictures. I want to watch your film for free. But they don't want to consider the money you put in. Because filmmaking right. is really expensive. Getting equipment, getting to locations, the whole logistic thing is really expensive. Right. So we, we, we would love to get even uh, policy spaces whereby we can start discussing how the whole filmmaking can be valued you know, in, right. in, in, in monetary ways. Right. Yes. And, and the opportunities that are there. We have Kenyan films that are on show marks, some that are on Netflix. So the opportunities have grown as well in the industry. The whole, the whole space, yes, mm -hmm. as, especially in distribution, has, has improved. And uh, we appreciate also the fact that Kenyans have begun to watch Kenyan films. Right. And even for us as, as documentary filmmakers, we've been in, in, a, in a space whereby people don't watch documentaries. Um, People think on the only movies that can be watched are fiction. Right. So we, we, we've, we've seen a transition in the past few years where people can pay to go watch cinemas in Kenya. You know, people watch uh, when we have premieres, people wa are willing to pay. Right. So such spaces and such uh, opportunities like Netflix, Showmax, are endorsing the whole film industry in that you can make money and you can make a, a living as a filmmaker. And also the other thing is the whole digital space, right. you know? The whole digital, digital space has been able to open up. We having even people who are non-filmmakers who are now thinking, oh, I need to take this up uh, seriously as a content creator. And it, it's opening up the whole uh, creative space whereby you, can, you don't necessarily have to wait until you have a big screen. You can start putting out your content slowly and right. build up your, your space. And also being in an era where people want to watch on demand. So if I feel like I want to do a documentary, I'll just go look for a documentary and not wait until a documentary is given to me. Yes. Right. And now the enemy, piracy. We know, we know the Kenyans, the all those people who know uh, the, the movie is out today, uh, even internationally, a movie is out today. By tomorrow, someone is, is telling you, you want that movie? Trust me, I have it's, it. it's a whole, uh, I don't know what whether to call it a ghost or a whole animal that we need to fight. But one thing I love right. is uh, sometimes you need to look at how you go about your distribution also, mm -hmm. you know, because you can try as much as your best to control it and manage it before it can get to the whole piracy space. Right. Sometimes all this uh, piracy thing is a difficult thing because even the ones who are pirating don't know it's a mistake. They think they are helping you publicize your, <laughs> your product, right. you know. But how often do you go to a supermarket and pick bread and just run away with it? <laughs> you know, you, you, have, <laughs> Never. Yeah, you, have, you have to pay at the counter. So we, we're still figuring out the whole um, space. And, and that's why I was telling you we need to set up systems that could easily help and, and, and control things for filmmakers and generally the creative space. Right. And now let, let's go back and talk about Genoa. Yes. You know, my director is telling me it's not Genoa. Yes, huh? Genoa. Genoa. <laughs> so let's talk about Genoa. Uh, you said that uh, it's um, in line with the Filamu Dada. Yes. And so you're looking, you're following several women leaders in the country. So is there a criteria that you used to select these women leaders? Uh, when there was a call out by uh, Media Focus uh, in Africa, Flav and Diesel in partnership with DocuVox and other partners, they'd done a huge call out for Kenyans. And definitely I'm sure there were other amazing filmmakers that, uh, that wanted to follow other amazing leaders, right. but they had to zero it down to seven. And in these seven, we had uh, a well distributed in terms of region and in terms of uh, space in leadership. So we had... Uh, a story like Donya, the voice of the people by Irene and Debra, Irene Mkonyoro and Debra, right. which was following the women rep for Kisi. We had Entomononi Nagol by Cynthia Abdalla, Ivy Adambi and Skita, um, Skita, which was following a chief from Kajiado right. who had been fought for days by the men and yet he had been appointed by the government. And then we had another story, the nomads, the nomads' daughter by mm -hmm. Gumato Denge and Aisha. Right. 
And then we had, uh, the nomad's daughter also was following, um, she's a woman rep for Isiolo. And then we had Maito, which was following Sabina Chege, who is more on the national politics. Right. We had Chef Tigonyol, which was done by uh, Miriam Kosge and um, Chirotich Kibet, which was following the Nandi women rep, Cynthia right. Muge. And then we had now Genoa, the ah. rise of Gladys Wanga, Genoa. yes, which was following Gladys Wanga, who ended up becoming the governor for Homer Bay County. And finally, we, has, we had uh, the force within by uh, John Kabugu and Ashley Murugi, which was following um, Cecily Mbarire from Embu. Right. And these amazing seven leaders, randomly, we were following them during election. And guess what? They all won, wow. which was amazing. Mm -hmm. And we are hoping these women get to retain their spaces because when you look at the amazing what they work they are doing, it's really it's really beautiful to to watch these women, you know. Uh, because for the longest time, people always believed, you know, women doesn't have space in leadership. Yeah. They don't have a voice. You speak when you're spoken to. But but look at what uh, our character Gladys Wanga is doing at Homer Bay first time, and she's really doing amazing. Right. Yes. And uh, the whole G7, G7 thing that the president was, 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 was launching the other day, I am sure is coming from the fact that these, some of the women that have been elected are really doing amazing things because otherwise then the president wouldn't be endorsing it. Right. Yes. Uh, women leaders right there. And so in essence, again, uh, Philamu Dada is also empowering other women because if you tell stories of women leaders, yes. then we are empowering women everywhere. Because for the longest time, uh, the stories, even when we were doing research for all these stories, for me as Wendy, I'd, I looked around and I noticed when you search the biograph, but the bios for our female leaders. Many right. times you find the gossip and the and the and the you know the gossips about these women. Right. But when you look for the men, you'll find their news uh, interviews. You'll find their breakfast shows. You are, you'll find a whole article written about what they have done in their constituents. Right. But but for women, many a times it's it's just the gossip and the and the and the bad vibes about the women that that are running on the socials. So these stories will really 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 help other people yeah. to look at women leaders as leaders, not just as women. Right, time you, to change yeah, the narrative. We, we have to change it because people will be like, ah, she's just a woman leader. No, she is a leader. Right. Yes. Right. She has her own, in, in her own right, she has yes. made significant development. Yes, and we, we, we're hoping such stories can, can be used as, as, as a way of um, a, a reference point for mm -hmm. other women who would want to buy in the future in that you want to be a governor, this is how to go about it, this is, these are some of the challenges you'll go through and this is how to handle them. And besides that, we would like to have more women in elective spaces, not just affirmative. Right. Because not, not, in nomination sometimes you don't get even to vote, you don't get to, to have a, a bigger sure. say. We need more elected members. Right. Yes. And uh, you're in the creative space. There is a block from time to time. How do you handle it all? I know there can be a lot of pressure uh, in this kind of work. And so you can have a freeze. How do you work that out? It's good to have friends to talk to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> first thing first. It's good to have friends to talk to and be able to release because the whole creative space is not easy one you do films and then it's not be able to make money back right that is the first thing that could easily stress you and that's why sometimes you see issues to do with uh, mental health among us the creatives right. uh, and then also there's this Im imagination that people have that creatives easily have money mm -hmm. but also we need we need to i don't know how we will re-educate our audience to understand that yes i could be out there, you see my face on screens, you see my face on set, but how can our audience also support in terms of pay for our content, then I'll back, make the money so that you don't see the imaginary money by the fact that right. you are a celebrity. So you stop yes. saying, oh, but I see yes. you on screens. Yes. Yeah. And it's good to also have this, you see collectives like Filamudada has become a collective. So you can talk to each other because when, you, when you're filming, sometimes it stresses you. Sometimes your character is not even picking your call. Sometimes even, you know. Yeah. So you need to have collectives where you can easily re release the stress that comes from production or just general stress in life. And it, it would be good for creatives to be able to talk to each other and talk about the issues that they have. Right. And then you, we can have an amazing and right. good vibes in the industry. Okay, and, and, and finally, yes. uh, making films, being in the film industry. Many people are trying to come up 
and you know challenges of every day but one person has that dream how can they keep the hope alive keep doing what you do because mm -hmm. the more you're doing it the more you'll fall in love with it the beautiful thing about filmmaking is I always say filmmakers are like gods they're always creating things they're always creating people they're always right. creating spaces they're creating their own universes so the more you're doing the more you fall in love because you're always meeting new people you always always going to new spaces just keep doing don't right. give up do your stories right and uh, you're among the women you know when you when you're winning films then uh, it it works for other women who are coming up as well and so people are getting inspired what do you think the future looks like for women in film as we wind up the most beautiful thing in the past few years i've been able to see the change women are taking up space especially in the film industry right. the women are taking up space and the most amazing thing is that even taking up managerial and uh, technical spaces so in as much as there are few challenges of course the men will still be, be they always ahead and the men have always had this space i'm happy that the women in this country kenya are really really going for it they are not waiting to be handed over to they're just taking up the space and uh, within the Filamudada and um, other institution we're happy that uh, when we are doing our screenings we usually have panel talks and mm -hmm. uh, we, are, we have master classes and these things will enable young uh, young females to be able to right. to also learn from us and, and move forward and join the whole film industry right and thank you so much there was a question I, I was a very burning question that I was waiting to load. Yes. Oh, now it's here. Uh, there's a question that, again, you have to address. You know, many people are interested and they want to get into the space. Uh, the question goes, I have been in the film for the past year. I recently made a film that um, I made not with the intention of making money out of it, though it cost me a lot. Did I do wrong or should I tell my stories with the aim or bread in my mind for cash. First, you're never wrong. You did your story. The most important thing is good was at least you've taken the step of doing that story because some of us have been having scripts in our heads. We have them in our books somewhere in our bedrooms, but people haven't been able to execute. The right. fact that you've done your film and it will get out there is the first step. At least you've done something. Um, in as much as she's saying she didn't have the intention of making money and then later on you realize, ah, I it's used a lot of much. money. Yeah you still have the opportunity also of doing distribution and figure out how to recover you know right. at least you have a product that you can show people and say this is what i have there is yeah this, oh, this, this is what i can do yes yes that is the most important thing at least you've done you've put in the work and you have a product at hand right yes. thank you so much my director is telling me time is really up <laughs> but thank you so much and thank you for